Let's discuss process of selecting big data solution for different scenarios. Uh, first of all, big data is described as uh, the solution to the 3V program. And first V is velocity, when we are trying to process uh, hundreds of thousands of events per second and trying to pre-aggregate data or to filter data. Uh, another one is just high volumes of data and it can be structured data, for example, or non-structured non data. And third one will be high variety of data, which means that we're trying to process not only uh, structured data, but also different formats, like same structured data, like CSV files, video files, and so on. So it's unstructured data. Uh, this is a decision tree, which shows uh, three groups we discussed. So on the top, you can see complex event processing, then here is a big data warehouses, which means that uh, in this case we are trying to process high volumes of structured data. And third one is NoSQL processing, which means that we're working with different formats of data. Let's start first of all uh, with uh, complex event processing. In this case we're trying to process hundreds of thousands of events per second and uh, we can do aggregate data, filter data in real time. And uh, there are two components of it. First of all, we need to ingest somehow data into the system, and then we need somehow to process data. To, so we need to have standing queries and using sliding window, for example, we will need to apply some type of uh, query on top of this data stream. Uh, l let's first of all dis discuss data ingestion. So for data ingestion in Azure, you have an uh, option which is called Azure Event Hub. So it's very easy to use and uh, you just can easily create one and feed data into this event hub. In the case when you use uh, different types of sensors and you want to manage this sensor to change parameters of sensors, you can use Azure IoT Hub for Internet of Things. So it supports uh, all of these IoT protocols and cloud to device communication. And also you can use alternatively open source solutions like Kafka. In this case, you will use HD Insight uh, component in Azure uh, with uh, uh, Kafka installed on top of it. Uh, by the way, you can use Kafka not only for uh, data ingestion, but also for streaming. So it's also, easy, as you can see, it's uh, available under this real-time processing uh, group. Uh, alternatively for stream processing, for real-time processing, you can use Azure Stream Analytics, which is again simplest of the all of these alternatives here, uh, available at, out of the box, and you can uh, easily, uh, using even the portal, create all of these SQL-like queries from the portal. Alternatively, you can use open source based solutions. Uh, in this case, you will use HD Insight cluster with uh, Sto uh, Storm or Spark Streaming installed on top of it. Uh, so it really depends on if you already have developers working with these environments. Um, if they already use Storm, you will use Storm. If they already use Spark, probably you will want to use Spark Streaming on top of it. And there are a lot, some differences in terms of performance here. And also, obviously, because you're using Spark here, you can use it for alternative workloads. There are also developer-oriented scenarios, and you can use Azure App Service Web Jobs or Azure Functions. Uh, but these components don't have uh, built uh, temporal windowing support. Uh, so probably uh, it, these things can be used for some of the scenarios, but not traditional real-time processing streaming. Okay, let's move to big data scenario, uh, big data warehousing scenarios. And in this case, we are processing high volumes of data. In this case, we have a lot of uh, massive parallel processing solutions here. We have Azure, data where, uh, Azure SQL Data Warehouse Generation 1 and Azure SQL Data Warehouse Generation 2. Uh, all of these solutions use blob storage to store data. Uh, in generation two, you're also using 
SSD caching, in intelligent caching, which allows you to significantly increase performance. So in this case, you will experience four to five times faster performance compared to generation one. And also improvements like uh, you can have 128 concurrent queries and some other improvements. And by the way, you can upgrade from generation one to generation two. If you are using on, if you want to create the solution on premises, you can use Microsoft Analytics Platform System, previously known as uh, Parallel Parallel Data Warehouse. This is a hardware appliance, and you are you are using physical racks for storage. And uh, disadvantage will here will be that you are manually managing this environment, and if you need to extend storage, you will need probably to buy another rack. Uh, of APS. Another alternative new solution is a SQL Server 2019 Big Data Cluster. So it's in the middle between data warehousing and NoSQL uh, storage on premises. And in this case, you will have SQL Server for data warehouse. And in, in terms of data volumes, it will be not petabytes, probably, probably it will be just hundreds of terabytes of data for one uh, main NoSQL node. But also, you can have uh, NoSQL uh, no storage there uh, based on HDFS file system, and also uh, additional groups of SQL Server for processing big data using Polybase Engine. Uh, so it combines data warehousing and NoSQL storage and NoSQL processing. Uh, another option, obviously, is Hadoop, which you can deploy manually on top of your hardware. And it, it will conclude NoSQL on-premises solutions. Or alternatively, it can be infrastructure as a service in uh, different clouds. When we talk about Microsoft Azure, we have uh, separate solutions for processing, which you can see here. Uh, separately, we have NoSQL databases. And separately, we have uh, data storage in Azure, storage and management. Idea here is that you can have separate storage, and on top of it, you can deploy different types of clusters for NoSQL processing. So let's discuss, first of all, uh, NoSQL processing. And in this case, uh, you can uh, use options like Azure Databricks, which is based on Spark, and it also provides you Azure-based user interface and uh, collaboration environment. You can create multiple clusters from there. It enables auto cluster termination and auto scaling. You can also use Azure Data Lake Analytics, which is uh, based on USQL language, so it can combine C Sharp and uh, SQL capabilities in it. Very flexible, and probably it's relevant for people already working with Visual Studio, with C Sharp, and with different Microsoft development technologies. Another feature here is that uh, you will be able to pay for each query execution, uh, which is convenient for development scenarios, for example. Uh, disadvantage here is that the roadmap is not clear currently. Uh, also, you have multiple different flavors of uh, HD Insight. So on top of HD Insight in Azure, you can use, uh, you can create uh, HD Insight with Spark for in-memory processing, fast in-memory processing. You can use Hadoop. Uh, which will use map, uh, MapReduce in this case. So it's traditional disk-based uh, processing. And in this case, uh, you will have many components to open source components to extend your uh, scenarios here. Also for real time, uh, for um, live queries, you can use HD Insight with uh, Hive live queries. Uh, so it's fast querying with intelligent caching in this case. And also you can use machine learning services on top of HD Insight, which basically uses a RevoScalar engine, which allows you to process much higher volumes of data, data compared to what can fit actually in memory. So in this case, you uh, the engine will process subsets of data, storing all of the data on disks. But you can still apply machine learning algorithms uh, on top of data on disk. So this is this will be manual main advantage here. Additionally, to some just uh, 
scal scalability features. When you're using no when you need NoSQL database, there are two different options. You can use Azure Cosmos DB, and in this case, the adv key advantage here is that it's globally distributed databases. It uses uh, networking uh, networks uh, between uh, Azure data centers, very with a high throughput between data centers, and also it allows you to use multiple models like graph databases, uh, white column, J you can process JSON fi files and different APIs on top of it. Um, and there are multiple consistency, consistency levels and uh, SLAs, uh, service level agreements for latency for these different consistency levels. Another option for NoSQL databases is Azure HD Insight HBase. And in this case, you're using HBase on top of HD Insight for wide column storage. And you will need manually configure it. Uh, and but in this case, you're using open source based uh, NoSQL database. And for storage, so it's a third uh, bucket fun of functionality in Azure. There are multiple options. Uh, most universal storage is Azure Blob Storage. In this case, uh, it's compatible with most of the components in Azure. So you can process data in Blob Storage from different components. Uh, there are limitations for storage. You can use maximum 500 terabytes per account. And also it's a general, general storage, so it's not optimized for uh, analytical workloads, uh, which actually is, this optimization is enabled in Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 1 and Generation 2, which you can see on the slide. Uh, so it's high throughput, uh, it's hierarchical storage. So Generation uh, 2 uh, kind of combines compatibility of blob storage with uh, hierarchical storage and also with high throughput of generation one. Uh, it's still probably not compatible with th some of the components, so please check documentation around compat compatibility and it always improves over time. And there are other options for storage like Azure Table Storage, uh, but for most case, in most cases, uh, Probably you will use combination of Azure Blob Storage, uh, which is more compatible uh, with uh, Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 2, which is for high throughput, for analytical workloads, for high performance and scalability. And this concludes our discussion of Big Data Decision Tree, which allows you to understand better what are the options for big data scenarios. Uh, which options are available in Microsoft Azure. Please feel free to uh, send feedback if you have any suggestions how I can improve this. And see you next time.